these areas of uh, the areas of semi-arid areas they can be very hot sometimes you feel like giving up on some of the activities you're doing but being christian the principal farmer christian cannot just give up eh, i started when i was trying to quench my throat to talk to you better because when it is very hot you can even talk to people and they listen to you and they get to know what you're telling them today we want to show you how you can farm passion fruits passion fruits up to there they are passion fruits how you're going to farm them effectively in the semi arid areas i'm a farmer christine is my name the principal farmer the real life coach because I told you something just once. You've learned it. I think my explanations, I just give God the glory. They are just super. I talk to you. You get it. You understand? So my family, I thank you. We want to show you how we have done this. How we are farming passion fruits in the semi-arid areas of northern Uganda, East Africa. That's where Christine is farming from. I have a, a seedling of the passion fruit. This one is ready for gardening. It's already one feet tall. So from this stage here, you really have work. If you want to take some juice, like this. If you want to taste some juice, if you want to get a good passion fruit like this one, the work starts here. So how have we done this successfully? When you have your passion fruit, the seedling, like this one, we always transplant it when it is a fit in the length a fit in the length so after transplanting is done in the semi arid areas is when you're going to start seeing real farming actually the person who named this fruit the passion fruit without that passion for farming you can't do this especially in the semi arid areas but i'm giving you the hints the channels, the means that I've used to reach here, to reach this level. They are not yet ready like this, but at least where we are going, we are seeing there is a green light. Within the tunnel, not even at the end of the tunnel, but within the tunnel, we are seeing a green light. So what have we done? After you have done your transplanting of your passion fruit, the seedling, uh, within a short period, probably you transplant today, give it two weeks, give it good watering, it will start bringing ten reels. Ten reels are these uh, hooks here. These ones here. Those are the ten reels. They'll come from the passion fruit here and you'll see them growing up. So when the ten reels have grown, you need to put a tree to support your plant your passion of truth to start climbing these kind of trees so i thank god finally i got this kind of tree which can bring some branches and they germinate around it however before you could get those ones you plant this one today you come back the next day termites have eaten it all they have eaten from top to bottom or from bottom up to up so termites could disturb every day you find yourself you have to buy uh, medicines to kill termites. This one here, the first one I bought was called the ant termite. It didn't work. I went to the next one. This one here is called ant killer. I bought it and I kept spraying every day on these trees. It worked for some time, but it didn't even help me so much. I got another one. The trouble hasn't ended. Uh, it's the one I'm using right now to control the termites. Because without these pesticides, actually, those who have been following me, I make my personal organic pesticides. But this time with termites, I was like, I'm defeated. There's nothing much I can do. So I had to spend, and yet our channel, it has the cheapest, the easiest, the quickest, and best methods of farming. But this time, we had to buy the anti-termites. So all those ones I've shown you, they could work. Two, three days, you find one passion fruit has dried. You find another one, it is yellowing. Then you're like, what should I do? So put a stick to support the passion fruit to grow. Then maybe you'll use some string 
all like for us we could make ours from the banana fibers because we want to use the cheapest the easiest for everybody to farm so we could get the banana fibers we make a string and we tie on our passion fruit then it climbs the tree like this so after your passion fruit has climbed up make sure every two months for example if you plant in april i love april because it's by my bus mass so if you are planted in april plant with some manure so all the time we get manure chicken manure is always available we give this manure to these passion fruits every two months then the watering if the rainy season helps you and comes and it is very good but in the semi-arid areas, our rain can disappear anytime. So we could measure. We have a very beautiful cup. We usually, I told my daughter one day to take it to school and she was like, Mommy, they write for you a letter to parent. A letter to parent saying, let your girl try another school. Why? The appetite for porridge is high. I said, why? That the kind of cup you want to give me. I said, okay, if this cup is too big, let's use it and water our passion fruit. So every day we could measure two liters and we give our passion fruits. That's how, that's how, that's why you can be able to see some fruits coming. However, it is dry. It is indeed dry. We are still uh, facing some challenges of dryness here and there. So besides that, you'll find uh, you have to do pruning. Passion fruits, whenever you see a leaf, without any productive work. For us the, here, we call them dependents who are not productive. So when you have a dependent like this one who is not productive, because this one here, it's a, uh, a leaf that is supporting this fruit to eat. So this is a dependent who is productive. But here, you can find their dependents who are not productive like these ones here so we always come and we remove them the same to those branches which are not uh, productive we always prune them off then because of termites and very many challenges like some infestations that always come in the passion fruits like you'll find others they even shrink in because of the weather maybe the heat is too much from up we always come and spread these passion fruits every Sunday. I have to wear my attire for the garden. I call it my uniform. I love my friend, is a major general in the army, calls my attire another uniform which is um, unique of a kind because for him he used to his. And when I put mine, I tell him, please, I can now salute to you. And he's like, please. You better stay in the garden. I said, okay, all our departments are equally important. You're in security. I'm here farming for you. So we do the farming together. So I have to put on my overall. Then I come to the garden. I put my um, power sprayer on the back. Then I spray my crops every Sunday. I've done this for the past five months to reach this level. I'm telling you, I don't have a lot. But to me... As the principal farmer a one is better than a zero Whew. so after I've done my garden work I always go back home take a sip take a sip of that juice whoever visits me those people who visit me I've told you these areas are hot those who visit me and have really appreciated your coming to the farm we take juice together we stay in the garden moving around not slaying but just enjoying our gardens flowering fruiting we mix the mangoes the mango juice like it has been the mango season we mix the mangoes the passion fruits that god has given us in the semi-arid areas we also make some oranges we have very good oranges and we make very good juice Woo! this one here and we enjoy farming because when you don't have the energy like you have not eaten then performance is going to be low your performance is going to be low so we take these fruits we take the juices and we really feel the benefits of being a fruit farmer even in the semi-arid area sometimes some friends were like you're struggling with passion fruits yet they are hard to farm in these kind of areas why 
I said I want to be the change the community needs. The change that should be in the community starts with you, my viewer. My subscriber, you're going to be the change such that we create very many hunger-free communities. These things here, they are really going to bring a change. Instead of staying in these dry areas, you get dehydrated, they take you to the hospital, you find the queue is very long. Get your juice, you hydrate yourself, and you stay healthy. Thank you for farming with Christine, all my subscribers out there, I love you so much. I can't mention one by one, but those ones who are really at heart, you know, we know ourselves. Thank you. Thank you very much. But above all, get that blessing from above. It's the only one that will change everything from zero to hero. From a one to one thousand. I mean my subscribers because it has been a long journey, me and you. So above all, subscribe and stay blessed. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ.